Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about parameterized URLs as well as query parameters. Two very similar concepts, but slightly different. And we're going to talk about both of those in this video. Basically, this is a way to pass additional information to the web server by customizing the URL that you are visiting. So before we go into code and start implementing this, let's just go through an example of what this looks like so you understand both parameterized URLs and query parameters, which honestly you'll probably hear those used interchangeably. Basically a way to have some variable data, some customizable data inside of the URL. All right, so we have our server listening on port 3000 and we have the ability to get customers and this will basically grab all of the customers. What if we wanted to grab a specific customer, maybe passing in some ID? To do this, we could, after a slash, pass in that ID and most likely it'll be one of these IDs down here from MongoDB. So I will copy this value and paste that here. So this could allow us to get the information for just that specific user. Currently, this does not work. So this is a parameterized URL that we can define inside of Node.js. But another way you might see this is instead of a slash, you might see a question mark and then assigned values to different variables. So this is another structure that you might see. So I would say that these are query parameters. This one actually works because this information is considered additional. So basically this is the actual route and that ID was just a bonus. However, if you go the other path where you just use slashes, this is actually a different path. So Node.js will actually see this as a different path and will accept the request differently, which is why this one does not immediately work. We haven't set up that endpoint yet. Now this video is sponsored by Ultra Edit, one of the most customizable editors out there, available for both Mac and Windows, so be sure to check that out. I'll drop a link down below. So to accept some ID passed in, we're going to make a get endpoint and the path is going to be slash API slash customers and then slash colon ID. So the colon is to say that this is some variable and the user is going to pass in a value. If they don't pass in a value, then it will hit this endpoint instead of this one. And then similarly, it's just going to have a function here, which we will define real quick and we will make the request and the response. And to get started, all I'm going to do is respond by giving them back what they sent us as the ID. So to do that, we'll say res.json, pass in an object, and we'll say request params, and assign this rec.params. So you wouldn't have to make the in an object, but we're gonna add some extra here, so we'll start with that. So I'll save, go ahead and hit send, and you can see we get the request params back with the ID of this value. So we're able to successfully retrieve that ID from the URL. If, again, as mentioned, we don't pass that in, it's actually going to hit the other endpoint, so we get all of the customers. Now the other way with the query parameters using the question mark and then the assignments, that is going to be a different property. So let's go ahead and see what those are as well. So we'll put a comma, and inside of here now we will have request query, which is going to come from rec.query. So let's try this. So we'll say customers slash some ID. Currently the request query is empty. However, if we then did a question mark and said something like ID is equal to this value, and we would hit send, and you can see we get that value here now. So which way to do it is up to you. You don't need to do both. I'm just doing both here as an example to show you the different ways of doing it. Now, an important note is if you don't pass in the ID as the path, it's going to hit the other endpoint and the ID is not going to be displayed. So if you wanted to use the query parameter like so, you would need to define that within just the plain customer's path in our code. So you would need to take care of that in this section of code. So now that you understand the different ways of doing it, I'm going to mention that my preferred way is to use a path like so instead of the query parameters. However, if you wanted to modify it or change some filter, that is where you can often use this extra information. So for example, you might say age is the value 50. And then you could use that value 
to filter the database data more specifically to the user's request. Additionally, you can pass in multiple values with an and sign and say something like state is Ohio. And that'll give you two values. Same thing with the path. You can throw in another value here before the question mark and just say test. And in this case, it's going to give an error. And like I mentioned previously, when you actually use the slashes, it's creating a different path. So if you wanted to have nested paths like that, then you would need to actually change the path in Node.js. So it would look something like this test. Just going to give it a name real quick. I don't have any good examples. Hit send. And now you can see we get all of those values. So this would typically be for nested data and not for some filtering. So for example, you might have customer ID and then within that customer, you might have some order ID or something like that, where it depends on the first data. So think of these like almost like a folder structure. We're going into customers, into a specific customer, and then into some specific value for that customer. Whereas the query parameters are typically more independent. You can include ones, you can remove ones, they don't depend on each other. The next video we're gonna talk about how we can take these parameterized URLs, extract that ID, and use that in a MongoDB query to get the appropriate information to send back to the user. Thank you for watching, peace out.